Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this week's nursery tour. Yes, here we are in June. It is crazy. I don't know about y'all, but I do not know where time has gone. But here we find ourselves in the first full week of June. Loads of plants are about to explode in color. So we are going to share some of those great things with you. So remember, we are a grower retailer here in Dallas, North Carolina, Zone 7B. We do these weekly nursery tours to give uh, the folks who were coming to see us and just who want to see what's happening here at Creekside Nursery, a snapshot of what is growing, blooming, and thriving here at the nursery. We're going to give you some tips and some tricks and some design ideas. It is a very informal, fun time where Jerry and I just walk through the nursery and show you fantastic things. If you remember last week when we did, um, we were up at production area and we were showing you perennials, we talked about how the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon is in just in full bloom and absolute gorgeous glory right now um, and so we talked about this guy right and how this is a great perennial to attract pollinators while we were up there the bumblebees oh my gosh y'all they were all over this plant it is a cloudy uh, kind of a rainy day here today so the pollinators I think are all tucked safely in their beds uh, but this midnight mask or excuse me, Midnight Masquerade, got a little froggy in my throat there for a second. Remember, as we were going through, Jerry said how gorgeous it would be to pair the Midnight Masquerade with the Summerific Lilac Crush. This is one of the two new perennial hibiscus that Proven Winners has released this year. And so, um, Cece, who is uh, our fantastic employee, set this up for us so that you could see what it would look like, right? So we have the Lilac Crush Summerifics um, here, beautiful, very lavender, light lavender color flowers, very, very similar to that Midnight Masquerade. Now, they may not be blooming at the exact same time, but this is what's gonna give you a beautiful color transition in your garden. So you can plant these together and you get an idea of you have the height, of the Midnight Masquerade with the Lilac Crush right here. These, all of this is gonna be full sun. And so you've got those guys together. And then we, I think we even talked about doing the backlight. Um, yes, so we have the, um, this is the Luminary series of flocks from Proven Winners. The um, backlight is a beautiful, pure white flower. And you can pair that one with Edge of Night. So, no, this is Holy Grail. Oh, excuse me. Well, Edge of Night would work too. Yeah. So any of those nice dark foliage color um, hibiscus. So Edge of Night is going to be pink, whereas this is Holy Grail and it is a beautiful red. So just depending on what your color palette is for your garden, you can put those together. I know y'all like to know about um, zones. Your summerifics are hardy in zones of four to nine. The phlox is hardy in zones three to eight. And this is what we call a paniculata phlox, meaning that it's gonna be taller and has those cone shapes to it. Cece went ahead and paired the um, phlox and the holy grail with this fantastic geranium. So this is a, uh, <laughs> a hardy geranium, right? So it's a perennial, it's not what we think about typically as an annual. Um, this is the New Hampshire purple or New Hampshire purple, however you want to say it. And if you don't have a hardy geranium in your garden, you really should. They have just typically they come in these purple different shades, great ground cover. It is going to be hardy in zones four to eight, only about like maybe, and I say only, 12 to 18 inches tall, and then it has a beautiful spread on it. I have several different geraniums in my, uh, the forest pansy bed, and I love them because they're relatively in like a late, well, let's see, yeah, late spring, early summer. We're not even into summer yet. So it feels like we're in summer. Um, bloomer. So mine have been blooming for three weeks already, I would say, and just a beautiful, beautiful plant you've got a nice design up here you go from low medium up to high so great pairing there another plant that i was really um super excited about with how well it did this year is the drops of jupiter oregano we've talked about this before and i know people are like i mean even i was kind of like 
Um, it's oregano. Like, what, you know, what's the big deal? Well, drops of Jupiter, first of all, let's talk about that color. Is it not gorgeous? Stunning. Um, beautiful chartreuse color. It is going to be about 24 inches tall, and that is going to include when it is flowering. I have three of these in my backyard flower beds, and they are starting to put on some height, which means that flower buds are coming soon. Hardy in zones four to nine. And that's the interesting thing is because we were growing, we we're growing this, right? These are our plants. So last year, we had it and we were growing it. And um, the reason I'm sharing you this story is because, so Laura with Garden Answer was planting some mature ones in her landscape when we were had ours and hers were like huge and tall and flowering. And we were looking at ours going, well, what in the world? Because ours are a little short. When you put it into the landscape, it gets nice and big. So ours that I've had in the ground, um, I put them in late summer, are absolutely gorgeous. And for us in our North Carolina Zone 7B, it was an evergreen. Like all winter long, I still had this beautiful chartreuse color. So yes, they may look short right now, but you have to envision it, what they're going to be. Nice, beautiful mounds that are just a gorgeous color. What? I see a cool pairing with that. Jerry sees a cool pairing. What does he see a cool pairing with? The Agastache. Yo, the Agastache. Yes. Agastache, Agastache, how you ever say it? Okay, so we could go, really, I would probably put it with yes. the Royal Raspberry. So let me show the tags first. They do enjoy their tags, honey. So this is the Meant to Be Royal Raspberry. The Meant to Be series is new this year. There's Royal Raspberry and the next door we have Queen Nectarine. Great um, later bloomer in there. Um, massive pollinator attractor. So yeah, those together. put those together and they would do great. They have the same sun requirements. They need to be full sun. They have, um, they're gonna be great pollinator attractors. They're both deer resistant, rabbit resistant because I mean, oregano is oregano and Agastache is in the mint family. So they're both um, resistant to those little critters in there. Um, you're going to get a beautiful height difference. You're going to have, this is gonna be flowering 24 inches. This is gonna be about 32. So there you go, it works out fantastic because when you're, um, and I'm gonna do a video uh, later this week about working in the cottage garden and adding perennials into your garden and looking at your garden at different times of the year and filling holes wherever you've got those holes, fill them with color and interest that you're not normally gonna have somewhere else. We always think about springtime. We get so excited about the spring and we load up on color for the spring. But then I noticed when I was transitioning from like spring where I'm going into some, my summer color now, I was having just like all green. I needed something different. So I'm gonna walk you through that next, um, one of these videos coming up this week. But this is a great pairing because you're gonna hit that late summer color with that, oh, gorgeous color combination. Good job, honey, on that one. So we're gonna come back over here um, so I can uh, put this up. We were talking about geraniums. We also have the geranium from Proven Winners, and this is a Boom Chocolata. And Boom Chocolata is really fun where I say that a lot of the geraniums are more low and wide. Boom Chocolata is gonna get some height to it. So 20 to, 24 to 26 inches tall. I have, again, I have three of these. I like to plant in groups of three, makes a bigger impact. Oh my gosh, y'all, they are full and they are covered in these beautiful blue flowers. Just a great interest. And again, like you could pair even the chartreuse, I mean the, um, yeah, the chartreuse color of the oregano with this, it would be a great combo as well. See, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Your uh, Boom Chocolata is going to be hardy in zones four to eight and just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. So there you go. We're just full of all sorts of little design ideas today. Another plant that I think we, um, sometimes it was a, traditionally was what I would consider kind of a pesky plant. If you had a nice big wide open area, then that was great, but yarrow. Um, so, Yarrow would naturalize really well. And so it was, it was kind of a 
pain. I know we had it initially in our garden and it would spread and Jerry, was, it was just driving him crazy. Well, so Proven Winners, of course, takes those pesky traits and, and gets rid of those. So this is the Firefly Peach Sky, which is an Achillea, a yarrow. And this one is going to be 32 to 36 inches tall. That will include your flowers and it's going to be about two and a half feet wide so your mound is going to get nice and bigger i have the firefly sunshine which is the yellow in my garden and it is the most beautiful mounds of this great fern like foliage with covered in flowers so the firefly peach sky is going to be a little bit of yellow it's going to be a little bit of peach light peachy orange flowers that age to a yellow super easy to take care of you do need the full sun well draining soil um, mine are they are tough plants but gorgeous plants i mean like look how thick and full that's the great thing about these the rootstock that we get from Proven Winners and our friends over there at Walters Gardens, they do not send us wimpy rootstock. This is nice and full. Like this pot is heavy. It is going to, you put it in the ground and it is going to explode. The zones on that, did I tell you, uh, three to eight. Yeah, plants are grown in so many different ways. Yes. From a, a small liner to a medium liner. And then from Walters, specifically the big rootstock, which Yes, it's very different. It's way different. Right, so, and that's when we talk about with folks who are like ordering, like consumers, right? So home gardeners who are ordering plants online from whoever you're ordering from. I always tell folks it is, it is not a bad thing to order plants online because for some folks that's the only way that they can get certain plants, right? Obviously, great. Um, that's the wonderful thing about living in the age that we do that you can order online. But I tell them, I said, make sure you know what size plant you're getting. Um, and if you are ordering a bare root, what size plant? So like a grade one, if this is grade one bare root, that means it's a nice, big, healthy, healthy root system. And then they go on down. So just do a little bit of research on your plant size is it a three inch pot is it a quart pot is it a gallon pot so just be aware so that you know exactly this plant size that you are getting that's a little free free tip for you there um look at these how fun are these these are the amazing daisies marshmallow this is a shasta daisy marshmallow i think you can tell uh, how it got its name because it has those really nice thick fluffy flowers on it this is going to be a great perennial only 18 to 20 inches tall so it's a nice depending on your garden you could put it in the middle or the front of your garden make beautiful cut flowers they're going to be hardy in zones five to nine just gorgeous double blooms on them here's why don't we do this um i guess we got the tag on that one yeah. um I have found though with the Shasta daisies in general, you don't have to deadhead, but it certainly helps the plant. It cleans the plant up and it does help encourage new blooms on it. So this would be a plant um, and the whole Amazing Daisies line is that you're going to want to come through, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, and you're going to want to just clean it up a little bit, right? So just do that for you. All right, my folks who have lots of hot, dry, dry, areas and that you're looking for a great plant to do well this is the denim and lace russian sage and i will be the first to admit that i never really understood the attraction to russian stage sage rather because we do have the clay soil and so much of our soil when it gets wet it stays wet however when we put the berm in at the top of the berm closest to the driveway it's really kind of, I mean, it's right there. It's underneath maple trees, but it gets the blazing hot afternoon sun. And that is the driest, hottest part of that entire berm. We planted Russian sage and it did magnificently well. It has went through the winter great. It is coming back nice and strong. Mine in the ground, I dare say, look very similar to this. They are putting on buds but a great, beautiful plant that does those nice sky blue flowers. They're gonna be 28 to 32 inches tall, hardy in zones four to nine. I believe these are deer and rabbit resistant because again, it is a sage. So it has that very nice herbaceous, almost reminds me of like rosemary smell. 
a beautiful plant, low maintenance. Does not like to be fussed over whatsoever. Um, all right, I think we were gonna move on down here because we have, sorry, we're gonna stop for a moment and we're gonna pivot over here. Um, lavender. So we have, we offer two different types of lavender here at Creekside Nursery. We have the Proven Winners. This is the Sweet Romance. This is going to be um, a little bit of a shorter variety, 12 to 18 inches tall, um, nice, beautiful green foliage on it with that classic bloom that you can see right there, hardy in zones at five to nine, and just really nice, beautiful fragrance to it. I will admit, I have struggled in the past growing Sweet Romance here in my North Carolina red clay soil. I have, I have, yes, it does great in a pot. I have, I have killed a lot of it. I am not going to lie. I always tell y'all that I'm going to tell you the truth. And so, um, if you have a drier, more arid environment, then this is a great one and it does really, really well. I've seen gardens where this is just planted in mass and it is stunning and I have major plant envy because I can't do that. The best success I had with my Sweet Romance was in a container really nice well draining soil in a pot um, and you can put that pot in the garden okay now if you want mass planting and you have a garden that's very similar to mine right so you're in the south you're hot you're humid you have thick clay soil that holds on to moisture really well well this is phenomenal and phenomenal is just simply phenomenal it is a gorgeous fantastic english lavender that obviously is going to have a lot of a height difference size difference than the sweet romance our friend kata from walters turned me onto this last year when i told her i was done with lavender she said try phenomenal i did they are gorgeous they are absolutely stunning i'm going to show them to you probably this week because they're about to explode into bloom just like these are in the back right off of the patio i literally have done nothing to them um, and they are gorgeous this is going to be hardy in zones four to nine and they will get as you can see that 18 to 24 inches tall that will include your flowers and 36 inches wide now at first i was like there's no way that lavender is going to get three feet wide here in north carolina mine are getting pretty close i mean they are rocking it out and have not even been in the ground for a year so if you have tried lavender in the past and you have failed miserably, but you're like me and you really want to try lavender again, Phenomenal is the one to go. And it is non-branded, so if you're not coming to Creekside, you should be able to get this pretty readily. Um, and again, look online. I'm sure there's nurseries out there that you can do mail order with Phenomenal Lavender. Um, We've talked about Coreopsis before. This is one of the few perennials that is just a continuous bloomer, right? Continuous blooms, nice and short uh, size on it. You don't have to deadhead, you can deadhead. It is a pollinator attractor. We have all sorts of little friends flying about right here. This is a full sun plant. Beautiful, nice, bright yellow and kind of a um, burgundy bronze center to it with that nice red center. Nice, tidy, mounded habit. So like, for example, all right, so if you wanted to come in here and deadhead, so this is an old bloom. That down there is a new bloom. You don't want to pull this, you want to pull that. So what I do is just get my thumb and I just pop it like that. Now, do you have to do that? Absolutely not. So for, you know, I had this in the landscape for years and it was in a space where I didn't like walk by it. We drove by it, but I didn't see it like up close. So I never deadheaded it. Here at the nursery, if we're going to walk by and we're just standing here talking to you, then I'll just sit here and go ahead and deadhead it because it just cleans up the plant, right? Um, so hardy end zones, five to nine, I think I said that. Nice long blooms. Monarda, bee balm. These are amazing perennials that will give you beautiful color. Hummingbirds love them, pollinators love them. The critters, your deer, your rabbits, tend to stay away from them because again, they're part of that mint family and they have a delicious minty fragrance to them when you brush up by them. I think we have three or four different varieties right here. So the one that Jerry is showing you right now, that is upscale red velvet. It's gonna be one of my tallest ones, I believe, at 32 inches. 
This would be similar to if you're familiar with Jacob's Klein. That is the old traditional one that we just get massive, nice, beautiful red flowers. But unlike Jacob's Klein, it is not going to go floppy and it is not going to spread like crazy. These are going to be hardy in zones four to eight. Full, full sun because they can be sometimes played with powdery mildew. So you want to give them the full sun so that their foliage can dry out. And um, yeah, there was something I was going to tell you about that and I can't remember. Oh yeah, consistent moisture. I, for some reason, was thinking Menarda didn't like a lot of moisture. And it's not that they're water hogs, but they like consistent moisture. So just keep that in mind. So we have that. Then we have raspberry. Raspberry is going a little bit out of bloom for right now, but you can get a, get a sense for it. This is going to be shorter, only 10 to 14 inches tall. So you have the upscales, which are a little bit taller than the Leading Lady series, which is a little bit shorter. We also have the, um, the upscale, so they're a little bit taller ones. We have Lavender Taffeta. This is an older bloom, but it shows you um, that nice purple flower on it. So that's upscale Lavender Taffeta. And then we have the upscale Pink Chenille. This one is just starting to open, and Pink Chenille is a nice kind of neon pink color to it really beautiful great great plant um, so all of your bee bombs i love them because if you can look back here can we come back here just for a second to give you an idea of what they look like in the landscape these are the plants that proven winners sent to us a couple of years ago um, same plants put them in here and just let them go so we have the upscale lavender taffeta yep the lavender taffeta then you have raspberry uh, and I don't remember what the other two are over there, but that you can see the height difference of those plants, full blooms, just gorgeous colors. All right, let's see. How are we doing on time? You can go to hydrangeas? So maybe a couple of hydrangeas. Let's go talk about hydrangeas because we are about to really enter into hydrangea season. Um, hydrangeas, just like any other plant family, right? Your flowering plants, um, they bloom at different times. So like, you know, we've just come out of kind of rose season. So you will have like early, mid and late bloomers. Well, that is the same as your hydrangeas. They too have early, mid and late bloomers. We've had some wind and we've had some rain. So I see some of our friends have gotten a little tip, tipple toppled over here. So we'll, we'll try to straighten some people up as we come down here. So hydrangeas, they can, oh my word, we had a, we had some wind in here now, didn't we? Um, hydrangeas, we typically always think about them as being shade plants, right? Forever and ever, they were always shade all the great new breeding that has come out, we can now have hydrangeas in full sun. Still have the shade, full sun, and then we have ones that do best, maybe say in morning sun and afternoon shade. Here we have, this is the Firelight. So Firelight is going to be a panicle hydrangea. Panicle means, notice that the blooms are long, right? I compare it to like an upside down uh, ice cream cone. So when they get full, your fattest part is going to be at the bottom and then they will come up and be more narrow at the top. The great thing about panicle hydrangeas is that they bloom on new growth. That means when you're coming out of winter, for us that would be like mid-February, you come in and you give them a good trim. They put on new growth and when that new growth happens, then they put on these beautiful flower buds. The macrophylla hydrangeas, which is what we think the old Tommy hydrangeas that are in the shade, bloom on old growth. So if you were to prune those hydrangeas in February, you've just cut off all your flower buds. Also, if you get late frost and freezes like we always do here in North Carolina, and you have those uh, hydrangeas that bloom on old growth, a lot of times those sweet little tender uh, flower buds get fried and you don't get as many blooms. This is why I personally am transitioning to more hydrangeas that bloom on new growth. Therefore, I am guaranteed blooms. 
Firelight's really fun because it's white and then goes to pink. It'll get nice and big. Uh, I want to say in that six to eight, eight to ten. Six to eight tall and wide, hardy in zones three to eight. For me personally in North Carolina, this is the one that does the best as far as turning some beautiful color. Now, new on the market this year is pufferfish. Pufferfish is a, another panicle hydrangea that is popping out some beautiful uh, buds right now. This will be a, uh, your, your panicles are color specific. That means it doesn't matter what your soil pH level is, your flowers are going to be the color that they are. So it doesn't matter what your soil pH. Puffer fish, massive flowers on them, massive panicle flowers, creamy white. And then as it goes and matures and you get that bud, then you'll have this little uh, tuft on the end. So it's really unique. It's different. It is fun. I believe the puffer fishes are three to five. Yeah, three to five feet tall and wide, hardy in zones three to eight. They're gonna go for full sun to part shade. So what does that mean? It means that you need to have at least um, five hours of sun on it. So that could be morning or afternoon. I have a puffer fish at the house and then one in the berm and they get full all day sun. Pick them up. It is a monster, but I mean, like, so, right, right. So what Jerry's saying is, because remember, mature size is three to five feet tall. But when you come here, we don't sell wimpy plants here at Creekside Nursery. So this is in a three gallon size pot. This is, this is a gorgeous plant that you're going to get the most bang for your buck for, with this plant. And you're going to have it beautiful blooms like in two weeks, right? So. If you're looking to add hydrangeas to your garden, now is a great time to do it before the main heat hits, right? We just, it's crazy. If, you, if you're around here, you know how insane the weather is. Um, I see some down here. Let's see, are those, those are more puffer fish, I believe. They look, got bobos in here. Are these bobos? Bobos. Okay, so fun. So bobos is a, bobo is a, another, Panicle hydrangea, but it is going to be even, it's going to be a nice petite one. So even if, you know, firelight at the six to eight feet is too big, puffer fish at the three to five, you're like, you're still too big for me. Well, um, Bobo is going to be two and a half to three feet tall and three to four feet wide. Definitely a nice, more petite hydrangea. Still that beautiful creamy white flower on it. Hardy in zones three to eight. That's kind of typical for these panicle hydrangeas is that zones three to eight. But Bobo's again, another classic hydrangea variety that has been on the market for, um, for years, quite a few years. Um, if you were looking for hydrangeas, again, now is the time to go ahead and get, go shopping, visit your local garden center and get uh, your selections made, especially if you're in the warmer zones like we are. You can go ahead and get them. You're probably gonna have to baby them a little bit extra if you're warmer than we are for this first season, right? So make sure they're nice and adjusted because Right, you get tons of rain, then you get no rain. So you just have to keep an eye on them, but they will be fine. Uh, if you're in cooler climates, then absolutely go visit your local garden center, get some hydrangeas. There, are, there is a hydrangea for every garden, whether you're full sun or shade, you can have beautiful hydrangeas and you can have great perennials in your garden as well. Um, so if you're coming to visit us, we are open Wednesday through Saturday, nine to three. Those are our hours from now all the way through the end of the year. We look forward to seeing you. It's been so much fun meeting all of you beautiful people as you come to visit us. Jerry and I always had the best time meeting you great people. Thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.